Uh, sure, the players bring some skill to the game, but if I don't put them in my lineup, who cares? Not me. I'm Eric Rubino, fantasy baseball GM and league runner-up two of the last nine years. I use the progressive Name Your Price tool with options based on my budget. And for a guy that's used to being in control, it fits. Like this runner-up t-shirt. Champ gets a trophy, but you can't wear a trophy. Boom. Get options based on your budget with Progressive, even if you're not a legend in your own mind. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Discovery Plus is the greatest collection of real-life entertainment on the planet. 55,000 episodes from networks like TLC, HGTV, and tons more. Woohoo! Discovery Plus. Stream now. Stream what you love. So this evening, I want to share some information about the ordinary activity of the devil, as well as hopefully begin touching on uh, the role of the Blessed Mother in the ministry of exorcism. So very few of us will ever have to be concerned about extraordinary demonic attacks. All of us, however, do need to be concerned how the devil attempts to attack people in the ordinary circumstances of our lives in your marriages, your relationships with spouses and children, friends, colleagues at work and school, in your prayer life, your faith life, your moral life, and even your sacramental life. The devil wants to disrupt every phase of your life to see if he can destroy you. Temptation is at the center of ordinary activity of the devil, and the devil uses a four-stage plan of attack on all of us in order to try to trip us up on our daily living. A lot of these thoughts of mine come from Father Luke Camelli. He was a professor up in Mundelein when I attended seminary up there from 1987 till 1980 to 1991. He wrote a little book called The Devil You Don't Know, put out probably more than like 15 years ago. But he talks a lot about the ordinary activity of the devil, and he says that the devil uses a four-stage plan of attack against all of us in our daily living. And all of the words have to, they begin with the letter D. So the devil begins with deception. Deception leads to division. Division leads to diversion. And diversion leads to discouragement. So on our daily journeys, we all encounter something or someone who is intelligent, concealed, powerful, destructive, and who wants to intrude on our lives in such a way that they are harmful and destructive. It's worth our while to pay attention to these attacks for their primary purpose is to fracture our lives in such a way that we are pulled further and further away from God. And the further we are removed from God, the more we lose sense of our identity. The human person has been created in the image and likeness of God. We have the innate desire for God. St. Augustine said it best when he said, Our hearts are restless, O Lord, until they rest in you. The devil uses his ordinary activity to to try and drive a person away from God, whereby they become more isolated and more susceptible in believing the lies that the devil is presenting to them. The devil wants his lies to become the truth in the mind of the human person. So consider for a moment, have you ever struggled with any of these following examples? Have you ever found it difficult to get along with someone? Have you found yourself always being judgmental or critical towards someone? A longtime friend becomes tiresome and you think, I wish they would just go away and leave me alone. Do you find it difficult to pay attention to ordinary conversation? Have you ever used every bit of your energy to try to calm a troubled situation? Have you ever been surprised to find within yourself inclinations towards hostility, violence, or lust, maybe even the desire to exploit someone for your own satisfaction? And you think to yourself, where in the world did these thoughts or ideas come from? 
St. Paul put it this way in Romans seven eighteen through 19. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I desire to do, but the evil I, I desire not to do is what I do. We know the right thing to do. We're determined we're going to do it. And then we find ourselves doing the complete opposite thing. Deception. The devil inverts reality. He turns things inside out and upside down. He wants to pull us off track and then proceeds to present his lie as a truth. He lies. You will not die, he says, you will be like God. So when the devil lies, he speaks according to his own nature, for he is a liar and the father of lies. All of these deceitful promises have to do with the future. Gratitude always looks to the past. Love looks to the present moment, but fear looks to the future. Why do people see psychics and mediums? There's a fear of the future. And they want to have some concrete answers. So we want to be in control and we want to know the outcome. So there's no room for hope and trust. The end result is that the devil has misled someone and they now find themselves in the midst of scandal or depression. People are buying into the lies and rather than owning up to them, they try to justify them. And this leads to the second plan of attack of the ordinary activity of the devil, namely division. So it begins with deception. We buy into the devil's lies, and we begin to think that his lies are the truth. But when that happens, we arrive at division. So we should not be surprised that the devil directs his energy to division and disunity. He desires to divide people from God, from each other, and even from their very selves. The devil works against our very redemption in Jesus Christ, which reconciles us to God and allows us to share in the unity of the Holy Trinity. The devil wishes that all of us would collapse with him into eternal death and everlasting alienation from God. He does this by drawing us into a world of deceit and untruth. On the night before he died, Jesus prayed, As you, Father, are in me and I in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given to me, I have given to them, so that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may be completely one. John 17, 21 through 23. The devil's attempt at dividing us represents the counterpoint to Jesus' triumphal work of healing, reconciling, and unifying. Jesus always wants to bring things together. The devil always wants to make things fall apart. So the devil wants to stymie us, halt us, and even paralyze us on our journey through life. He doesn't want us to bring a sense of unity to bear in our existence. He can make us feel overwhelmed as though there is something out of our reach, something beyond our capacity so that we will give up. He also stirs up our fear to make us feel frightened so that we will withdraw. He can suggest that we compare ourselves with others, usually to the extent that we overestimate the abilities of others and we underestimate our own, so that we look bad in comparison. He sets us up against each other. Anger, resentment, contempt, greed, avarice. He can make us feel impatient so that we become agitated and dissatisfied. He can short-circuit us with addictive behavior like drugs and various forms of addictions or other infidelity. Think of the opiate crisis, alcohol abuse, addiction to pornography, the breakup of the family through divorce. The gospel teaches us that we will find our life when we give it back to God who gave it to us. In Mark's gospel, we read, for those who want to save their life will lose it. 
And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. Mark 8, 35. In order to give our lives to God, we must have something to give. That is, with a sense of unity, integrity, and coherence about them. We need to have our lives in our hands if we're to be able to hand them over to God. The devil does not want us to bring the pieces of our broken lives together. If we remain fractured, we are unable to surrender ourselves to God. This brokenness leads to the third plan of attack of the ordinary activity of the devil, namely diversion. Deception leads to division. Division leads to diversion. So that the devil, he desires that we divert ourselves from the pathway of God. He removed the, he moved the people of Israel who were on a journey to the promised land away from the worship of the one true God to the worship of false gods. Exodus 32, 1 through 8. We call this idolatry and is still a weapon that the devil uses against us today, substituting a product of our own creation for the uncreated God. The devil's goal in diversion is to have us lose our focus and our sense of purpose and direction. And diversion can act in a very subtle way. We can be off the path of God and off that path for a very long time and not even realize it. Types of diversion. We become absorbed in a task. We fail to see the larger purpose and direction to which God is calling us. We are distracted. Think of the story of Martha and Mary, Luke 10, 38 through 42. Martha, Martha, Martha. Martha is focused on what? Serving rather than doing the more important thing of listening. She's become absorbed in the task and she becomes filled with jealousy and anger and all those other types of things. Another type of diversion by way of contempt We know what we are called to do, and yet we are repelled by the task at hand. Something pulls us away from what needs to be done. Think of the story of Jonah and the well. Jonah had a job to do, but he allowed himself to think, I'm not going to do this, so he tries to run away. Another type of diversion by way of the complete opposite direction. Instead of getting slightly off course, The devil gets the person to move in a completely different direction. When this happens, the original mission gets completely corrupted. Think of David and Bathsheba and Uriah the Hittite. David gets off course slightly with his wandering eye, which then causes him to give in to lust, which causes him to give in to adultery, which then causes him to give in to murder getting off the task and gradually succumbing to the temptations of the devil. Another type of diversion is by way of relativism. It's a sense that nothing really matters. There's no stable truth, no grounding, and there is no specific direction that is right or appropriate. The end result is that one's life becomes a jumbled, disconnected mess of bits and pieces lacking all form and all coherence by way of addiction. We decenter our lives on God and allow something else to take the place of God, something that demands attention, devotion, cultivation, and sacrifice, all to the detriment of everything else in life, including the most sacred relationship of family, friends, and God. Think of the story of the prodigal son. He was willing to abandon his connection with his family to go and live a life of dissipation. That sense of life of sin that he wanted was the most important thing in his life. Another type of diversion is by way of distraction. The devil wants to interrupt our communication with God, that is to say our prayer, Four types of distractions that affect our prayer life. Number one, anxieties and fears about the future. 
that causes us to abandon our prayer life. Number two, the offenses that we have suffered at the hands of others. We feel like we've been victimized, and then we find it hard to pray. A third type of distraction that interrupts prayer, comparing ourselves both as who we are and what we have with others. I encounter many people who say, God must not love me because I don't have a good job, I don't have a good income, I live in a bad house, I don't drive a good car. What in the world have I... Wendy's Baconator is the ultimate bacon cheeseburger that puts all other cheeseburgers to cheeseburger shame. And now we're bringing that same big bacon energy to shake up and wake up your breakfast with the Breakfast Baconator. Stacked with a fresh cracked egg, sausage, cheese, and bacon. And right now, you can get a free breakfast Baconator with purchase in the Wendy's app. So get to Wendy's and always be Baconating. We got you. Offer available at participating U.S. Wendy's for a limited time during breakfast hours only. Offer must be redeemed via the app. Account registration required. Discovery Plus is the greatest collection of real-life entertainment on the planet. 55,000 episodes from networks like TLC, HGTV, and tons more. Woohoo! Discovery Plus. Stream now. Stream what you love. Done to make God punish me so much. And then finally... Of all the streaming services out there, only one is different. Discovery Plus. It's the greatest collection of real-life entertainment on the planet. 55,000 episodes of food, love, true crime, home, from networks like TLC, HGTV, and tons more. Yes! With stars like Chip and Joe, an exclusive new series from 90 Day Fiancé, all in one place. Bam! Discovery Plus. Stream now. Stream what you love. Of all the streaming services out there, only one is different. Discovery Plus. It's the greatest collection of real-life entertainment on the planet. 55,000 episodes of food, love, true crime, home, from networks like TLC, HGTV, and tons more. Yes! With stars like Chip and Joe, an exclusive new series from 90 Day Fiancé, all in one place. Bam! Discovery Plus. Stream now. Stream what you love. Being centered on the pleasures of the moment. Pleasure and enjoyment are not forbidden in the... Wendy's Baconator is the ultimate bacon cheeseburger that puts all other cheeseburgers to cheeseburger shame. And now we're bringing that same big bacon energy to shake up and wake up your breakfast with the Breakfast Baconator. Stacked with a fresh cracked egg, sausage, cheese, and bacon. And right now, you can get a free breakfast Baconator with purchase in the Wendy's app. So get to Wendy's and always be Baconating. We got you. Offer available at participating U.S. Wendy's for a limited time during breakfast hours only. Offer must be redeemed via the app. Account registration required of all the streaming services out there only one is different discovery plus it's the greatest collection of real life entertainment on the planet Fifty-five thousand episodes of food love true crime home from networks like tlc hgtv and tons more yes with stars like chip and joe an exclusive new series from 90 day fiance all in one place bam discovery plus stream now stream what you love Christian life. However, when they become distorted, they can pull us into ourselves. Self-absorption is the danger. A good example is the rich man in Lazarus. Every day, poor Lazarus would sit outside the rich man's door. When the rich man would come out, he would just step over him as if he was nothing more than clutter in the street. Again, the rich man was focused on his own pleasure and enjoyment not recognizing the suffering of one in front of him. So after we have followed the ordinary activity of the devil through deception, division, and diversion, we arrive at the final stage, discouragement. (coughs) Discouragement. So when we have bought into the lie that has left us broken, that has taken us off the path of God, we arrive at the moment of discouragement. Discouragement has to be the most dangerous threat to the spiritual life. It is evident in the tiredness that marks the faces of so many people. It manifests itself in the people we see with no affectivity on their faces. People walking down the street, in supermarkets, restaurants, even sitting in the pews on Sunday. In Dante's Divine Comedy, 
There's a sign that's hung above the entrance of hell, and you know what the sign says? Abandon all hope, ye who enter here. These words ring true for those who have been swept into the dark and deep hole of discouragement. Discouragement leads people to make decisions, to stop trying, to pull back, to do something else, or even just to come to a halt. These things are of such great interest to the devil because he knows that discouragement ultimately will derail us on our journey to God. In the Christian tradition, discouragement can be seen as acedia. It's a word that comes from the Greek word akadeo, which translates, I don't care. Acedia speaks of things like melancholy, sloth, laziness, especially in regards to religious obligations and practices. It can be the result of things like tiredness, feeling overwhelmed, intimidation, and personal disappointment. When people have journeyed through the stages of the ordinary activity of the devil and arrive at discouragement, I believe they arrive at a crossroads. When again, when we have brought into the, when we have bought into the lie of the devil, we find our lives broken. We're no longer on the path that God has laid out for us. We're now discouraged. We find no meaning and purpose in our life. The crossroads, another two words that begin with D. Discipleship. We can arrive at a spiritual awakening and we can recommit ourselves to God. The other pathway leads to death. Always spiritual, but even sometimes uh, it can be physical. Think of the growing trend of suicide. So what do people do when they are discouraged? How do we reach out to them? I believe this is the call of the new evangelization of which St. John Paul II spoke of. So what should be our response to the ordinary activity of the devil? The gospel presents us with a remedy. It proposes that on our journey through life, we should expect struggles and disappointments, but that our fears be properly aligned. In other words, we need to fear God and not the devil. And we talked earlier today about what the fear of God really means. We are amazed at God. We're able to see all the blessings in our lives and all the wonderful things that God is doing. Even in the midst of our disappointments, in the midst of our times that we're tired, we still see how God is working in our lives, striving to bring purpose and meaning to our existence. So we need to hold to confidence. We need to stay the course. We need to have confidence in the Holy Spirit who will lead, guide, and direct those experiencing the ordinary attacks of the devil. And most certainly, we constantly need to identify with Jesus Christ. In the Christian context, we cannot speak of evil or the devil apart from our reference to our faith in Jesus Christ, the one who has conquered the power of evil through his death and resurrection. So in the face of the ordinary activity of the devil, we must always look to the healing and redeeming work of Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life. Again, it is our relationship with Christ that gives ultimate meaning to our existence. And without that relationship with Christ, we find ourselves completely adrift. Yesterday in my first presentation, I talked about how so many people today have abandoned their faith. And I believe that there's a lot of people today that are spiritually adrift. They're lacking the sense of cohesion in their life. I think there's more people today that are discouraged than people who are depressed. They just find no meaning and purpose in their life, and so they just go through the motions day after day. And some of them, when they arrive at that discouragement to such a high degree, will say, what's the point? And maybe they end up taking their own life. You know, over the last couple of years, we've seen a lot of prominent figures here in the United States who've taken their lives. And we might say to ourselves, how is that possible? They've been very successful. You know, 
why would they take their life? And again, I think it's the ordinary activity of the devil who brings us to the point where we find no meaning and purpose within human existence. But again, it is Jesus Christ that gives us our ultimate identity. Go back to that comment from earlier. The human person has the innate desire for God. Even if people don't realize that, we all have a longing for God because we experience an emptiness within us. But that's an emptiness that only God can fill. When people try to fill it with addictive behavior or material goods, it just leaves them wanting more and more and more and more because it's never enough. Only God can be enough, the one who can satisfy the deepest longings of the human heart. So in my ministry, I encounter far more people who are dealing with the ordinary attacks of the devil than those who are dealing with the extraordinary attacks of the devil. So again, when we look at the cross, it should remind us that our ultimate identity is found in our relationship with Jesus Christ. That's a message, I think, that has been lost on a lot of people in the world today, even a lot of our young people. And so the challenge for us is, how do we re-evangelize? That's really the task at hand. When I look at the ministry of exorcism, I tell people that doing this ministry has helped me to rediscover again my call to priesthood. I mentioned earlier it's so easy to see priesthood as an occupation rather than as a vocation. But doing this ministry has helped me to rediscover priesthood as a vocation. People say, Father, why did you become a priest? And I, without hesitation, will say, because it's what God wanted me to do. And people will say, well, isn't there things you had to give up and isn't that hard? And my response is, well, God is worth it. If God is calling me to do this, how could I do anything else? And again, doing what God wants us to do doesn't come without sacrifice, but we have to believe that the sacrifice is well worth it because we're doing what God intends us to do. God has a plan for each and every one of us. We need to figure out what it is, and we need to do it. But it's the devil in his ordinary attacks on the human person who does not want us to discover what God's plan for us in this great, wonderful gift of life that he has given to us. Anyone have any thoughts or questions that you want to ask about the ordinary activity of the devil? It's pretty plain to see, isn't it? Yes. Okay, so <clears throat> even at discouragement, where it gets pretty bleak, that person still comes to that crossroads. And you mentioned discipleship can still reach out, but that's pretty tough, and you need, you need somebody to help them along, right? And that, and that someone is all of us, people who know the importance of a relationship with Christ. We're called to go out. We're called to be those evangelizers, those missionaries. It's not just the work of priests or deacons or men and women religious. It's the baptismal call. So how do we encounter people in our daily living that are discouraged? Do we invite them to come to Mass with us? If they're not Catholic, do we invite them to come to an RCIA class to join the church, to come and see? But I think the challenge for us is to make sure that we have a smile on our face. We need to radiate joy. If we're like, you want to come to church with me, you know? <laughs> You're not doing anything else, could you come, you know? <laughs> you might like it, I don't know. <laughs> if we're walking around with long faces and we're encountering people who are discouraged, they're going to look at us and say, whatever you have, I hope it's not <laughs> contagious. Because I feel terrible enough and I don't need any more. But if we're radiating joy because of our relationship with Christ, people should look at us and say, whatever you have, I hope it's contagious because I need it in my life. And we can say, what I have is a relationship with Jesus Christ. Let me help you walk in your own journey so that you can have this relationship as well. It's making our faith really meaningful and relevant today. 
I was just gonna make a comment. It seems like the hardest ones to reach are our own kids, you know, family yeah. members who are what he said the hardest ones to reach are our own family members. A prophet is not without honor except in his native place and in his own home. So, yes, we're in good company when it's, we have to reach out to our own family members. Um, Father, what would you say is the best way to, um, to uh, respond to ordinary attacks? Like, you know, if you have people that you have difficult times um, interacting with, or every time you're with them, they upset you, or how, what is our best response to, you know, those feelings, and how do we change that pattern? So if we're encountering people that seem to be caught up in the ordinary activity of the devil, how can we reach out to them? How can we help them? Even at times when maybe we find ourselves impatient with them and frustrated with them, it's like, why can't you see what I see? You know, why is it so difficult? Why is it so hard? I think we just constantly have to set the example. What's the classic line? Preach the gospel at all times. If necessary, use words. Use words coming from? Attributed to St. Francis. So set the example. I think Mother Teresa probably converted more people by her example than many people have done by actually preaching the word because she put her faith into action. I think when we put our faith into action, we set the example, and I think that brings people to Christ. But if we just as Christians blend in, and nobody can tell the difference between us and non-believers, there's a problem. We should stand out. Not, I'm not saying that we do that because we want to say, ha, 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 I'm better than you, but we should stand out to the sense that we're radiating the glory of God goes back to those halos again. How do we develop the glow of God in our daily living so that those who are trapped in discouragement, will, 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 they'll want to come close to us so they want to absorb that for themselves. I think we do that by how we live our lives. We're, we're loving and we're kind and we're compassionate. We hold to our truth. We don't compromise our truth because if you truly love somebody, you tell somebody what they need to hear, not what they want to hear. And I think that's a danger today is that sometimes we compromise the truth so as not to offend anyone. But there are ways that we can present the truth that God has handed on to us in such a way that we're not condemning people. But we want, because of our love for them, we want to bring them to how God intends us to live. Father, what if you're the one experiencing it? What if you're the one experiencing? And I think most of us experience it on some level. I think that's the sense of community. Who are we surrounding ourselves with? That's the importance of doing things like joining a rosary group. Wendy's Baconator is the ultimate bacon cheeseburger that puts all other cheeseburgers to cheeseburger shame. And now we're bringing that same big bacon energy to shake up and wake up your breakfast with the Breakfast Baconator. Stacked with a fresh cracked egg, sausage, cheese, and bacon. And right now, you can get a free Breakfast Baconator with purchase in the Wendy's app. So get to Wendy's and always be Baconating. We got you. Offer available at participating U.S. Wendy's for a limited time during breakfast hours only. Offer must be redeemed via the app. Account registration required. Imagine the greatest collection of real-life entertainment on the planet, all in one place. Go ahead, dare to stream with Discovery Plus. Stream now. Stream what you love. It's going to uh, maybe a Bible study, going maybe to a mom's gathering. A... Of all the streaming services out there, only one is different. Discovery Plus. It's the greatest collection of real-life entertainment on the planet. 55,000 episodes of food, love, true crime, home from networks like TLC, HGTV, and tons more. Yes! With stars like Chip and Joe and exclusive new series from 90 Day Fiancé, all in one place. Bam! Discovery Plus. Stream now. Stream what you love. Of all the streaming services out there, only one is different. Discovery Plus. It's the greatest collection of real-life entertainment on the planet. 55,000 episodes of food, love, true crime, home, from networks like TLC, HGTV, and tons more. 
Yes, with stars like Chip and Joe, an exclusive new series from 90 Day Fiancé, all in one place. Bam! Discovery Plus. Stream now. Stream what you love. Christ renews this parish. There are things that bring us together into community because I think... It's just a little shot, but the COVID-19 vaccine does more than keep you from getting sick. It will get folks back to work, get our kids back at school, and get our economy back on track. It's a shot of relief, a shot of hope. As the FDA-authorized vaccines arrive in Kentucky, just keep doing your part. We can't all get the vaccine at once, but we'll all get a turn. Get the facts at kycovid19.ky.gov. Imagine the greatest collection of real-life entertainment on the planet, all in one place. Go ahead, dare to stream with Discovery Plus. Stream now. Stream what you love. The ordinary activity of the devil works the greatest when we're in isolation. And that's the danger when, you know, where most of us are walking around like this all the time. And, you know, the only, the only time that we engage other people is food. Drink. Where, where, where's my drink? That's not what I wanted. And you can just see the agitation on people. So we should treat people as if they're not a bother, but a blessing. That's why I've shared, you know, when people say to me, Father, I know you're busy. And the priest friend of mine in Texas likes to say, yes, I am busy. I'm busy talking to you. How can I help you? Because if you tell people you're busy... What you're basically saying is you're not important because if you were important, I would make time for you. But I do think that we've become addicted to screens and these screens are leaving us in isolation. It's no wonder, in my opinion, that mass attendance continues to go down because the mass is a communal experience. And people today, in my opinion, do not value communal experiences. We value isolation. You know, I grew up, I shared a bedroom with three brothers. We used to call it the barracks. There was two sets of bunk beds. There was one chest of drawers, one drawer for each boy in the room. When the oldest boy's clothes didn't fit him, guess where they went? The next drawer. When they didn't fit him, the next drawer. When they were barely holding together, they ended up in my drawer. But somehow, again, that sense of being together. You learn a sense of community and the important role that other people play. I think today there's just too much isolation. So doing things with a sense of community. You know, we all have opportunities to do things at the parish. Parish has always put on programs and opportunities to come together. But what do people say? Ah, I'm just too busy. I can't do that. You know, really, that's a half a day commitment or or Christ who knows I have to come on Saturday morning and I don't get to go home till Sunday afternoon. I, I don't have that kind of time. And, you know, I can't do that. Excuses, excuses, excuses. But when we make a commitment, I think we can become, we can start overcoming these ordinary attacks of the devil. I have a question, Father. It's easy to be with like-minded people mm-hmm. like this. It is easy to be with like-minded people, she says, like this group gathered here. So she says there's a scripture passage that says, don't throw the pearls at the swine. So wasting your time, how do you, how do you come to understand that that's where you are? I think reaching out to people is never a waste of time. It can be very draining, but I think that's where the importance of community comes in. We should go out to the people that are not like-minded like us. But after we go out to them, we need to come back together with like-minded people so that we draw strength from one another. You know, when Jesus sent the disciples out, they always came back together. They took time for prayer, went off by themselves to a deserted place, and it was a chance to renew. You know, hopefully being on this weekend retreat, it's a chance for renewal, to renew your own spirit, kind of taking a time out from everything else. So that when you do go back to ordinary daily living and all the, you know, that comes with, you do it with a greater sense of meaning and purpose. But I think that the solution is to go out to the the highways and the byways and preach the gospel, reach out to people when they're mean and nasty and say, no, make sure you come back with like-minded people 
so that you can, we can draw strength from one another. I think that's the solution. Her own dark, he's talking about Mother Teresa towards the end of her life. Did she experience her own dark night of the soul that St. John of the Cross talks about? Was that oppression, you suppose, from the devil? Or was that God just testing her to see? I think it's natural. I think that's a natural thing for people at some point. It's that sense where the devil is trying to suck away all sense of hope from our lives. And then people say, does it really matter? Has my life made a difference? Serving the poor in India, did it really matter? There's the devil again trying to sow doubt in the, in the minds of people as perhaps we're approaching the end of our life here on earth. I think a lot of people, but again, Mother Teresa was pushed through that just because the devil may present that sense of hopelessness and despair, discouragement, she held on to discipleship. So I think all of us can go through these stages of deception and division and diversion and discouragement, but there are things clinging to the church helps us to hold on to discipleship. I think when we abandon the church is when we get ourselves into trouble, and that leads to the spiritual and sometimes physical death. Again, remember the analogy of the church. It's the new ark. Those in the church are those being saved. The people who have left the church, we need to go out and find them and bring them back on board the ark. We need to go and get them. And they may not come right away, but they may come. Blessed Bartolo Longo, someone you've never heard of, maybe some of you have. Blessed Bartolo Longo, some people have heard of him. So he grew up in a very devout Catholic family in Naples, Italy, towards the end of the, uh, the 19th century, early part of the 20th century, goes off to university and whatnot. He falls away from the faith, gets involved in satanic practices, devil worship. He becomes a satanic high priest. His family never gave up on him, constantly went out to try to bring him back, bring him to his senses. Bartolo Longo then recommitted his life to Christ, and then he began ministering to college students, helping them to stay connected with the church when they went off to the university. So think for a moment. A former satanic high priest is now on the pathway to canonization in the church. If you've traveled to Italy and if you've been in the city of Pompeii, there's the church there in Pompeii, Our Lady of Victory, Our Lady of Pompeii. It was built by Bartolo Longo because of his devotion to the Blessed Mother, believing it was the Blessed Mother who helped him to return to the church and rediscover the richness of his faith. In that church, it's a common practice. Anyone who receives a special blessing through the intercession of the Blessed Mother will bring items in to the church and put them on the wall. Maybe somebody who was praying for a broken leg will bring in a little figure of a broken leg, and the entire walls of the church are covered with these items that represent the blessings that people believe they receive from God through the intercession of the Blessed Mother, all the result of a former satanic high priest. No one's ever lost to God. We keep going out to bring them into the church when they reject us. Maybe for a time we leave them alone. We go after someone else. We come back with someone else. You ready yet? No? Okay, I'll be back. <laughs> you just never give up on them. But we do things according to God's timing. Yes. I know we probably don't have many in this day and age, but what about the way the hermits lived when they went off by themselves? The hermits, like St. Anthony of the Desert. I mean, weren't they isolated when they went off by themselves and just holed up in a cave or whatever? And but they went out. Their isolation was isolation meant to have a deeper encounter with God. They weren't running away from something. They were running towards something, an even deeper connection with God. And, of course, what was the stumbling block? If you know the story of St. Anthony of the desert, he encountered the devil in the desert, just like Jesus did. 
So the devil has always been synonymous with the desert because the desert has always been seen as a place of death, no life. That's where the devil is. But again, he pushed through the devil, and in doing so, he achieved a greater connection with God by resisting these temptations. It's, uh, that's beginning at the beginning of some of the disorders, though, too. And it was, like you said, they went to a closer union with God. But from what I've read sometimes, for people, and by chance passing or something, to talk to him, before long, people were coming. Yeah, so he went out into the desert to be a hermit, but then people came to him. He went out about the age of 20. He died at the age of 105. So at the age of 20, he believed that God was calling him to something more. So he goes out into the desert as a 20-year-old man. And then for 85 years, did battle with the devil in the desert. But because of the closeness that these battles brought him to God, other people would come out into the desert seeking his counsel. So here's the devil's trying to attack him. But the devil's attacks actually help bring people to God. Because they were like, what are you doing so I can do this? They came to learn from him a, a sense of, of their own religious discipline. So let's look at, this is supposed to be conference number four now. See, we're at 3.5 or something like that. <laughs> so Genesis 3.15 she will crush your head. So the unparalleled intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary during times of vexation, darkness, and uncertainty. So the following practices should be observed by anyone who is experiencing any form of spiritual attack or struggle, for they will help a person's, it will help a person to reset their interior so that they will always be directed to God. So the devil will attack us to try to get us to lose focus on God. But these are practices that can help us reconnect and recenter our lives on God. Some of these I shared before. Regularly attend Mass and receive Holy Communion. Seek out a regular confessor for the sacrament of penance. Spend time in adoration before the Blessed Sacrament because we are protected from demonic influence by our own union with God. And praying in front of the Blessed Sacrament, receiving the Eucharist, brings in, us into a union with God in a very special and profound way. We should use scripture for prayer and reflection, such as the prologue of John's, prologue of John's gospel. We've talked before about Ephesians six thirteen. put on the whole armor of God. It doesn't say the partial armor of God. Put on the whole armor of God that you may stand against the tactics of the devil. And what is this armor that we're called to put on? Ephesians 6, 14 through 17 gives us the answer. It says it speaks of truth, righteousness, faith in the word of God. We're doing these things. We are wearing the armor of God. Second Kings 6, 14 through 17. I love this passage. The Lord opens the eyes of Elisha so that he could see what was really there. So one night the king of Aram sent a great army with many chariots and horses to surround the city. When the servant of the man of God got up early the next morning and went outside, there were troops, horses, and chariots everywhere. Oh, sir, what will we do now? The young man cried to Elisha. Don't be afraid, Elisha told him, for there are more on our side than on theirs. Then Elisha prayed, O oh, Lord, open his eyes and let him see. The Lord opened the young man's eyes, and when he looked up, he saw that the hillside around Elisha was filled with horses and chariots of fire. God has sent his angels to fight on behalf of the Israelites. That notion, be not afraid, guess how many times it's mentioned in the Bible? 365 times. The Bible tells us not to be afraid. Coincidence? I think not. So we should include other devotions, the Divine Mercy Chaplet, I like the St. Michael, the Archangel Chaplet, prayers to patron saints, and so on. We should use sacramentals such as holy water, blessed salt, blessed objects, and sacred images. 
we should incorporate Marian devotions into the daily, our daily spiritual routine, especially the rosary. So the Blessed Mother plays a very unique role within the ministry of exorcism. The Second Vatican Council declares that Mary, daughter of Adam, in accepting the divine message, became the mother of Jesus. And embracing with her whole heart and without the hindrance of any sin, the saving will of God consecrated herself totally as a servant of the Lord to the person and work of her son. The devil could not touch the Blessed Mother. Why? Because she was full of grace. We too cannot be hurt by the devil to the extent that we're, we are united with God in grace. We can see the book of James, chapter 4, verses 6, 7, and 8. We look at the passage in Genesis 3.15. What does the passage say? We should all know it. 3.15, I will strike at your hill. She will crush your... Of all the streaming services out there, only one is different. Discovery Plus. It's the greatest collection of real-life entertainment on the planet. 55,000 episodes of food, love, true crime, home, from networks like TLC, HGTV, and tons more. Yes! With stars like Chip and Joe, an exclusive new series from 90 Day Fiancé, all in one place. Bam! Discovery Plus. Stream now. Stream what you love. Of all the streaming services out there, only one is different. Discovery Plus. It's the greatest collection of real-life entertainment on the planet. 55,000 episodes of food, love, true crime, home, from networks like TLC, HGTV, and tons more. Yes! With stars like Chip and Joe, an exclusive new series from 90 Day Fiancé, all in one place. Bam! Discovery Plus. Stream now. Stream what you love. Head. Strike at your hill. What do we do on Holy Thursday? Head. The wake up early, do a little studying, take the dog out, finish that audio book until the very end, finish that workout, then stop by McDonald's for breakfast and somehow manage to do it all before that 10 a.m. meeting meal. There's a meal for every morning at McDonald's. Like a savory sausage biscuit and hash browns bundle or sausage McMuffin and hash browns bundle for just $2 each. Price and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with combo. Imagine the greatest collection of real-life entertainment on the planet, all in one place. Go ahead. Dare to stream with Discovery Plus. Stream now. Stream what you love. At Mass, why do we wash feet? It's the notion of sinfulness. Me, 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 but also you. The Pharaoh fast forwards his favorite foreign film, P -p -p Powder Donut. <clears throat> okay, what's my line? Uh, the only line I see here on the script is get options based on your budget with the name your price tool from Progressive. Oh man, that's a tongue twister, huh? I'm sorry, I'm gonna need a few more minutes. <clears throat> bulbous Walrus, the Bulbous Walrus. The name your price tool, only from Progressive. The owl ran afoul of the comatose Coxswain. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates price and coverage match limited by state law. Imagine the greatest collection of real-life entertainment on the planet, all in one place. Go ahead, dare to stream with Discovery Plus. Stream now, stream what you love. That perhaps the devil has been striking at our heels. And so the washing of the feet is meant to be a cleansing of sin. And then we recognize the unique role of the Blessed Mother when she will crush the head of the serpent. How does, she, how does she crush the head of the serpent? With her heel, but her yes to God. Her yes to God. She gives birth to our Savior. And because of that, the serpent will be destroyed. So in the ritual, the exorcist says to the devil... Most cunning serpent, you shall no more dare to deceive the human race, persecute the church, torment God's elect, and sift them as wheat. The sacred sign of the cross commands you, as does also the power of the mysteries of the Christian faith. The glorious mother of God, the Virgin Mary, commands you, 
She who by her humility and from the first moment of her immaculate conception crushed your proud head. It was her obedience to God. Some of the strongest reactions of the devil during an exorcism occur when references are made to Marian apparitions. The exorcist will pronounce the name of Holy Mary with her titles, Our Lady of Lourdes, Our Lady of Fatima, Our Lady of Guadalupe. A great comment from Archbishop Charles Chaput in Philadelphia. He writes, This is why Mary, the young Jewish virgin, the loving mother, and the woman who punches the devil in the nose, was, is, and always will be the great defender of the church. There's a great picture You might have to Google it, but there is a picture of the Blessed Mother punching the devil in the nose. The devil looks like a wild beast with horns. The Blessed Mother, very peaceful and tranquil, just goes, (laughs) punch, right in the nose. At a Mass in the Basilica of St. Mary Major, Pope Francis writes that when we go through difficult times or have problems or worries, Mary is our shield, guarding our faith and protecting us from evil. He goes on to say, where the Madonna is at home, the devil does not enter. When we've invited the Blessed Mother into our homes, the devil will dare not enter. Where the the Mother is, these demonic disturbances will not prevail. Fear will never win when we have the Blessed Mother on our side. Again, he writes, Who of us does not need this? Who of us is not sometimes upset or restless? How often the heart is a stormy sea, where the waves of problems overlap and the winds of worry do not cease to blow. Mary is a sure ark in the midst of the flood. Pope Francis said that it is a great danger to faith to live without a mother, without protection, letting ourselves be carried away by life like leaves by the wind. Just like persecuted people once took refuge under the cloak of the noble, high-ranking women of their village in turbulent moments, he writes, we must take shelter under the mantle of Mary, the highest woman of mankind, for our own protection. Her code is always open to welcome us and gather us, The mother guards, faith, protects relationships, saves in bad weather, and preserves us from evil. As Christians, we cannot remain neutral or detached from our blessed mother, because without a mother, we cannot be children. And we are, first of all, children, beloved children, who have God for a father and the Madonna for a mother. To illustrate his point, Francis recalled the story of a woman who sat beside the bed of her son in the hospital. He was in pain after an accident, and the mother remained by his bedside day and night. Once she complained to a visiting priest that God never allowed one thing to a mother, which is to say to suffer in the place of her child. Here is the mother's heart, Pope Francis said. She is not ashamed of the wounds, of the weakness of her children, but she always wants to take the weakness upon herself. And this is how it happens every time, he said, whether we lack hope, we lack joy, our strength is exhausted, whatever our problem is, we need to realize the Blessed Mother will always intervene. She never, never despises our prayers. She does not let even one fall. She is a mother. She is never ashamed of us. She only wants waits to us. She wants us to be able to allow her to help all of us who are her children. And the Pope finally concludes by saying, let's make the Blessed Mother the guest of our daily life, the constant presence in our home, our safe haven. Let's entrust ourselves to her every day. Let's invoke her during difficult times, and let's not forget to come back to her to thank her over and over again. What's one of the great devotions to the Blessed Mother that Pope Francis has? Our Lady, undoer of knots. 
whenever we find ourselves tied up and bound by all kinds of craziness, we can turn to the Blessed Mother. So here are some testaments that demons were forced to confess about the Virgin Mary during major exorcisms. And these come from a whole litany of exorcists throughout the world. Mary is the terror of hell. She sovereignly loves mortal beings. Her love for mortals is inconceivable. She snatches us away from demons more than souls and all the angels and all the saints put together. Another exorcist writes, I compare Mary to a formidable army. He who loves Mary is a friend of God. God is pleased with Mary. He gives evidence of that by never refusing one grace of all those that she asks of him. Another exorcist writes, At other times in a disdainful tone, a demon manifested again his refusal to accept that the Virgin Mary was put over him through these expressions. She is only flesh. I am pure spirit. No, she is not. She higher than me, no, I am spirit. Many of the great theologians of the church went on to say that the real reason for the Lucifer's rejection of God was not really pride, but he could not accept the fact that the Blessed Mother would be elevated in heaven higher than him, that a creature of human flesh would rise in rank above him. Mary would become the queen of the angels, the queen of heaven. Could not accept that. So the rejection of, really, human flesh. On another occasion, responding with words already used before, a demon affirmed, I rejected that she would be next to him. I could not bear that a human creature would be above me because I was the most beautiful angel. Beautiful, 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 the greatest. I was Lucifer, the angel par excellence. Father Gabriel Amorth writes, the demon is terrified of our blessed mother. He writes during an exorcism, Father Candido Amentini, he's the one that trained Father Amorth again, asked the devil a question. Why are you more afraid when I invoke Mary than when I implore God himself. He responded, I feel more humiliated by being conquered by a simple creature rather than by God himself. Another exorcist writes, the woman, for love of his children, she was created before all times in the thought of God. And as a pure spirit, I cannot bear this, that putrid flesh, she is feared by us, because she holds you in her arms with her humility, obedience, and merciful love, the purity of her body. It was not ever touched, not even by a thought. We did not succeed, not even with a thought. I did not undermine her even with a thought, not one, not one, cursed. I was never able to touch her because that one always watched over her. There was always that one. It is not my fault. I was not able to touch her. I was afraid. One time the demon expressed the continual gratitude of Mary to God as follows. She always sings the praises of that one as she did before, but very few on earth are able to hear when she sings. The demon probably was referring here to our incapacity to understand the fully, fully the greatness of that heart that praises God for the benefit of of all of God's children. Here's a quote from St. Maximilian Kolbe. We have to win the universe in each individual soul, now and in the future, down to the end of time for the Immaculate, and by her for the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Further, we must be on the watch so that nobody tears any soul away from its consecration to the Immaculate. We should strive rather that souls may constantly deepen their love for her, that the bond of love between her and these souls may grow ever closer, and that these souls may henceforth be one with her. She will act through them in so far as they belong to her. Hence, there must remain nothing in them that is theirs. 
they must be hers totally. That sense of consecration to our Blessed Mother. Thoughts or comments about the important role of our Blessed Mother in combating the devil? She said that you read somewhere where her guardian angel was the Holy Spirit. That one, not really clear, but it is plausible. Yes? Also, I kind of find it funny. There is a little bit of truth in, even in Roman mythology where they speak of basically God falling in love with human women. And in a way, God kind of, in a way, there, Mary is in a way espoused the Holy Spirit and she was honored above God, above everybody else by God. And so that there's a little bit of truth. They all kind of saw Mary in a way. Yes. So she has a unique role to play within salvation history. What would you say are some of the um, recommended ways to ask the Blessed Mother to help on a daily basis? I have mean, certain prayers, you know, certain prayers to her, but I'd like to hear your, um, you know, your guidelines on. I don't think there's anything unique that we have to do. I think the church presents us already with the proper tools to connect ourselves more closely to the Blessed Mother. Certainly the Rosary, Chaplet of Divine Mercy, you know, the Memorari Prayer. I mean, yes, because there are, there is a, a prayer in the, uh, in the ritual that's devoted just to the Blessed Mother. Now that I say that, I just have to find it. Do you review that before you go to do an exorcism? Do I review this? Yes. <laughs> it's always good to do that. <laughs> Again, it's invoking the intercession of the Blessed Mother and asking her to be present. So in an exorcism, the Blessed Mother is called to be present during this prayer of the church because of the unique role that she has in salvation history, her yes to God. You know, the devil convinced Eve to say no to God. He wasn't able to get Mary to do the same. So the Blessed Mother reverses the no of Eve and gives us the yes. And in doing so, then, puts humanity back on the plan towards salvation. So the Blessed Mother is always invoked. And here we go. There's one. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Despise not our petitions and our necessities, but ever deliver us from all danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Comforter of the afflicted, pray for us. Help of Christians, pray for us. Grant that I may praise you, Holy Virgin. Give me power against your enemies. My mother in whom I trust. O Virgin Mary, Mother of God. Ah, the sweet sound of duct tape. The not so handyman's best friend. Patch a hole, repair your shoes. You can even use it on, you know, ducks. But did you know the largest manufacturer of duct tape in the United States is right here in Kentucky? As Kentucky's insurance company, it's our job to know a lot about the state we call home. And when there's damage to your home or auto, you can count on us to get them fixed right. No duct tape required. Kentucky Farm Bureau Insurance. Big on commitment. Imagine the greatest collection of real-life entertainment on the planet, all in one place. Go ahead, dare to stream with Discovery Plus. 55,000 episodes from networks like TLC, HGTV, Food Network, and more. If you can dream it, you can stream it. See what I did there? Discovery Plus. Stream now. Stream what you love. Plead with me for Jesus, most noble queen of the world, Mary ever virgin, who bore Christ the Savior and the Christ the Lord and Savior of all, intercede for our peace and our salvation. Mary, mother of grace, mother of mercy, protect us from the enemy and receive us at the hour of our death. Most loving Virgin Mary, hasten to my aid in all trials, in my troubles and in my needs, and beg for me from your beloved Son, deliverance from every evil and from all danger to soul and body. 
and then the memorari is listed right there. So, how many pages are there in that? How many pages are in this book? That's a good question. There are 81 pages in this book. So yeah, there's the. That's not the size of the print. There's the size of the print. We'd have to pray through the right completely, and then going back, certain parts could be repeated. Yes. How long does it take to go through the whole right? Um, I would say about 35 minutes, unless it's there's a. A lot of strong reactions. The exorcism I did in Alaska required four people to hold the demon down once it manifested, and there was a lot of flip-flopping around, and so trying to corral everybody and keep everybody in place, we probably prayed on that occasion for about an hour and a half. That's when the demon made the comment, your God is dead, being show the crucifix. Did that have something to do with um, native spirituality? Or... Yes. There's a lot of uh, brokenness in Eskimo villages. There's a lot of drug addiction, alcoholism, unemployment. Suicide rates are off the chart. When I was, there's a nun in the village who's the, the parish life coordinator. There's no resident priest. They only have mass maybe three or four times a year. There just aren't enough priests. The priests will fly in every three months or so to celebrate Mass. But just before I arrived, the, the sister in the village sent me an email and said that a young 15-year-old boy had committed suicide and his body would be arriving at the airport when I was arriving. And she said, would you help receive the body at the airport and pray with the family? So his, he committed suicide. His body was shipped to Anchorage for an autopsy, and then it was shipped back to the village for burial. It's kind of disheartening when you see a human body in a casket that's now inside of a shipping crate that's been stamped with its destination. A sister told me that just a few years ago, there was another young boy in a, a neighboring village who committed suicide. That same week, five of his friends took their life as well. So there's this, this sense of hopelessness and discouragement that is really rampant within many of these villages. Where do you usually do the exorcism? I know you hadn't really talked about like do you at the chapel. It's in a chapel or a church. Okay. Usually in a chapel because the chapel is more confined. You don't want to be in a church and somebody walk in just to light a candle and they're like, oh, excuse me, excuse me. Um. <laughs> Check, please. <laughs> So it should be in a sacred space, but kind of removed off the, I don't know, the common, the well-beaten path, just so that there can be some sense of secrecy. What's the demeanor of the person normally? The demeanor is agitation because the demon is now manifested, so it's the demon, and the demon is agitated because it's now being confronted by by the church and the power of Christ. It's like a child throwing a temper tantrum. You ever seen that? Yes. <laughs> Just kind of multiply that a little bit, but that's really what the demon, the demon is, is throwing a temper tantrum because it doesn't want to leave. Um, you mentioned that different prayers on the right have different levels of like efficacy or um, stirring the demons up. Um, do different demons have kind of like different personalities almost? Are they mostly the same or do they have a wide variety? Yeah, it's hard to say about different identities, how they're distinct. You know, the church teaches that each angel is its own species because there's no way to compare a non corporeal entity to another one, there's no commonality that we can see. You know, we can look at each other, okay, two eyes and arms and all of that. But for angels, we can't compare one to another. So we would say that they are species. Each one is a distinct species. And then angelic creatures move according to their, their thought, their will. You know, they, don't have to catch on a, they don't have to catch a bus or a train. You know, they can think, Boop, 
I want to be in this house in Savannah, Georgia. Boop, they're there. I want to be up in Gary, Indiana. Boop, you're there. So they move according to their thought process. How many angels can stand on the head of a pin? <laughs> We've all heard this question. Have you heard that? Yeah. It used to be a question always asked during college. Do you know the answer? It's as many as like the angel whoever taking up the space and by you acting that's how many. Like if one angel hogs the tip of the pin, nobody else can go along. If one angel is, is hogging the tip of the pin, no more than one can be there. And the answer really is is one. But because they're moving so rapidly by their thought, it appears to us that there may be more than one. But because of the, the, how rapid their movement is, that we can't even conceptualize or see, it may be appear, that, appear that there's more than one. So when you're doing exorcism, you, you mentioned before that there could be a person inhabited by multiple demons. What's the most demons you've ever expelled from a single person? Um, seven. Any reason why specifically that number? No, that was just the names that came out using the old ritual of the church, commanding the demons to name themselves. There were seven voices that came out of the person who was possessed. I missed this morning's talk, and you might have covered this, but I always wondered why, if I'm guardian angels, you pray the prayer of, you know, when God's love gets, commits me. So the guardian angel, what's their role in all of this? Yeah, why don't they do a better job? She wants to know why the guardian angel, our guardian angel doesn't do a better job of protecting us. Well, the question will be, have we asked for help? There are three things that our guardian angels do. They inspire us, they instruct us, and they illumine us. All I words. Inspire, instruct, and illumine. But we have to ask them for help. They don't just intervene unless they're asked. These are three words that I like that begin with I. They do many things, but the three primary things that they do, they inspire us to be closer to God, they instruct us in the ways of God, and they illumine us to be more godly. Again, illumined, again, taking on the glory of God. How are we radiating that? But we have to, we have to invoke their assistance. That's the failure of catechesis. Well, but I'm just I'm talking about, let's say somebody who's not raised in the, in the Catholic, the Ark of the Catholic Church, I'm a convert. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of stuff, frankly, I'm mad about. <laughs> <laughs> She's a convert. She's mad because you ordered the whole menu and they only brought you a side dish. <laughs> I didn't even know that was a whole menu. <laughs> I would say there's probably Catholics who've been Catholic all their life that don't even fully understand the richness and depth of the church. Because even people who go through the RCIA, you tell these folks they're just really getting a smattering, but hopefully the smattering they're getting is going to set their hearts on fire that they're going to go out and learn and even you know, grow in their understanding. Again, yeah, going to the seminary, never talked about exorcisms or demons that hardly ever. And that's four years of, I went to two years of college seminary. I went to IU in Bloomington for two years. I tell people that after two years in Bloomington, conversion is possible. Even in... <laughs> So I did freshman and sophomore year at IU. I lived in Wright Quad, right across the street from the library, right next to, I lived in Ferguson House. So... After two, after two years in Bloomington, I was, check please, <laughs> found myself at St. Meinrad, finished college at St. Meinrad, did first year theology at St. Meinrad. To be ordained a priest, you have to have a bachelor's degree in anything, a minor in philosophy, and then four years of graduate studies. And so then did first year theology, and then that's when I tried to run away, took a two-year hiatus. I've worked in a butcher shop. I did from high school through college and even graduate school for not over about nine years. So I did that when I took a two-year hiatus, and then 
I decided I couldn't run anymore, so then I went back. I asked Archbishop O'Mara if I could go to a different seminary rather than a one on a hill in southern Indiana, and uh, he agreed. And then he let me choose any seminary in the United States, and I went to Mundelein. So. What do you mean by illuminate? Illuminate. 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 Help us to radiate the glory of God. Again, think of the halo around saints. They're radiating the glory of God. How do we do that in our own lives? Illuminate. I'm wondering, when you, some exorcisms, you have to go back and keep performing. Some exorcisms have to go back, keep performing. What percentage would you say there's, you only need to do one of all the ones that you've got, had to do? Well, the, the most recent one I did was one and done. The serpent eyes, the green eyes and the pupil slanted. When I know the full story and have all the details, it's one and done. When people are not forthright, they've not shared all the information. I tell people I'm not there to judge how this came about. But for me to help the person, I need to see the whole picture. It's like going to your doctor and saying, you know, I'm sick, but I'm not going to tell you why. <laughs> but, but help me. Why does that matter if the right is the same? Why is that? Because understanding by going through, understanding the, the, le- the level of demonic possession, how many demons is it? Is it more than one? Can you hear me now? It helps me understand the level of demonic possession because they're not all the same. So the more information I have, it helps me to plan the attack. I may decide to use the new right based on what I learn. I may decide to use the older right. But the information that's provided helps me to chart a course of action. Yes? Um, I, with regards to your experience, it's very tangible, very concrete, palpable uh, experiences, things that you've seen, um, which probably the vast majority of us here have not seen. That must change you, right? As far as like, because we, we, we know as a just man walks by faith, mm-hmm. whereas you seem to walk by memory. <laughs> so he's asking the question, have the things I've seen in the world of exorcism changed me? And the answer on some level is yes. As a parish priest, the mundane things that people in parishes argue about, parishioners are upset about, <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> Somebody's mad because of a certain hymnal or a book or the school is discussing whether or not in the dress code can the students wear khaki pants or can they be navy blue pants? Is, is that allowed? And I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> That's not the acedia type either. But it's just not relevant to me. If somebody, if some parishioner is angry and upset, And, you know, they're coming after me and complaining, and I'm thinking, I've seen the devil, so. (laughs) I'm not afraid. (laughs) Yes. Were you during exorcisms given special graces to see things or hear things? Absolutely. And that's part of the preparation. She says, doing an exorcism, does the exorcist receive special graces to see things and understand things? Absolutely. And that's why I would say there's no such thing as an emergency exorcism. The priest needs to learn and pray, and and then God will reveal the, the way to proceed. So following up on that question, I mean, over your 15 years, you've heard the same demonic name maybe a couple of times. Do you approach that in the I've not heard the same name more than once, no. Really? Some people say, have I encountered the same demon more than once? And the answer is no. They avoid you? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I need to use better deodorant. I don't know. <laughs> You've heard the joke. Here's a, we'll end with a joke. Here's a joke. So the devil walks into a church on Sunday morning 
and all the people were there, and the devil was like, <laughs> Boy, everybody flies out. They jump out the windows. They're running out the doors to get out. There's one old man sitting there in the back, and the devil walks up and thinks, well, this guy must be hard to hear, and he's like, <laughs> The guy doesn't flinch. He's got his rosary beads in his hand, he continues to pray. And then the devil finally says, do you know who I am? He said, yep, you're the devil. He goes, aren't you afraid of me? He goes, nope. He goes, why aren't you afraid of me? He goes, I've been married to your sister for the last 20 years. (laughs) On that note, the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Wendy's Baconator is the ultimate bacon cheeseburger that puts all other cheeseburgers to cheeseburger shame. And now we're bringing that same big bacon energy to shake up and wake up your breakfast with the Breakfast Baconator. Stacked with a fresh cracked egg, sausage, cheese, and bacon. And right now, you can get a free Breakfast Baconator with purchase in the Wendy's app. So get to Wendy's and always be Baconating. We got you. Offer available at participating U.S. Wendy's for a limited time during breakfast hours only. Offer must be redeemed via the app. Account registration required. Discovery Plus is the greatest collection of real-life entertainment on the planet. 55,000 episodes from networks like TLC, HGTV, and tons more. Woohoo! Discovery Plus. Stream now. Stream what you love.